Hello friends, how's it going? Pastor Daniel Govea here and I'm showing you today the Jesus Centered Bible. Really cool Bible, has a really nice design. It comes in this nice box with this cool logo J for Jesus, Jesus Centered Bible and it retails for $34.99 but you can buy it on Amazon for around 20 bucks. The box opens to the side like this, is a clamshell box and inside it is white. Actually it came with this really cool white paper just to protect the cover. Although this is not leather, it's leather soft. It has a really nice grain to it. It's uh, really soft to the touch. Has Jesus centered Bible in the cover as you can see. And not only the logo but actually the words. Uh, the box is pretty sturdy. Again this is not a premium Bible but um, yeah the box is really cool. Um, I chose the saddle color. That's what they call it. Saddle. Imitation leather. And this Bible has a lot of cool f features. We're going to go through those. Just like for my last review, I reviewed the Jesus Bible and IV by Zondervan. I really appreciate the concept um, upon which these Bibles are built. I believe it's a biblical concept that the whole Bible points to Jesus, the whole Bible is centered in Jesus, somehow leads you to Jesus when you study it correctly under the influence of the Holy Spirit and comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. Now in the um, spine you find here on the top life tree group and then Jesus Centered Bible, the logo and Jesus Centered Bible again and then the cool logo of the New Living Translation. So this Bible is in the New Living Translation. You open it up, you have a little paper with a logo here and then you have, this is a paste down liner. I was reading a little bit and when I closed it, the cover was curling up a lot. Yeah, maybe with use this will get better. I don't know. I also believe this has to do with the way they paste down this liner. I wouldn't expect this to lay flat in Genesis. Well, not too bad. It is a sewn binding. Maybe with a little bit of use it will get more um, easy to handle. Yeah, again, it's not a premium Bible and you shouldn't expect a lot of premium features here. So, um, Jesus Centered Bible has the title page and here um, the, the group logo, New Living Translation, and then Life Tree. And you have the information here again with these three logos and you can pause if you need to interesting thing to me is that this was published in 2016. That's exactly the date of my dissertation for my Doctor of Ministry and, it, <laughs> and I actually wrote about how to preach the doctrines of the Bible through the cross of Christ. So of course this is um, a topic that is highly interesting for me and that I love. Here you have the contents, Old Testament, New Testament, and you have alphabetical listing of Bible books. Then you have a note to readers. This is the, a note concerning the New Living Translation and the updates that it had. And then you have the heart behind the Jesus Centered Bible. Actually they quote some things that I quoted on my dissertation so it's pretty cool. They quote Charles Spurgeon and uh, the Apostle Paul and yes. Um, then you have an explanation of the features of this Bible. It goes um, section by section. So blue letter text in the Old Testament they have some texts in blue. The text that they believe point to Jesus in a very direct way. Um, I believe that all the text in the Old Testament points to Jesus, but of course some texts are prophecies or they point to Jesus um, in a very direct way. And they have, um, they have rendered in blue, so it's not only a red letter Bible, but it's also a blue letter Bible. So in, in the New Testament you have the red for the words of Jesus and for something else I'll, I'll show you. And whenever you have the blue in the Old Testament you have a little box in blue, let me show you. Like for instance here in Leviticus, um, you have the blue in a 
passage that points to Jesus, and then you have the explanation in this little blue rectangle with white letters just explaining why they rendered this passage in blue and it, how it relates to Jesus. So really cool. So blue letter text, that's one of the great features of this Bible. Another feature is Jesus in every book. So um, in the beginning of each book of the Bible, like here, um, the beginning of Leviticus, they have um, an introduction that highlights how Jesus can be seen in the book of Leviticus. Then you continue and you have reframing Jesus insights and these are little in-text boxes in gray. Um, they call it reframing Jesus and basically what they do is that they give you the context for the passage that you are reading and how that passage relates to Christ. Um, and you understand that better because of the context and some theological um, key points that they uh, bring out. So like here in Second Kings uh, chapter 2, Jesus talks with Elijah and Moses. So in Second Kings chapter 2, you have the story of Elijah taken into heaven. And then um, they will tell you about the passage when Jesus talked to Elijah and Moses. You have another one here like in Psalm 23. Um, a shepherd who never fails us. So you have the whole Psalm 23 actually in blue letter. I wouldn't call this a blue, but more like a teal. And then you have um, a, a little box here saying reframing Jesus. And they will tell you that, you know, David was a shepherd and all that. And uh, how you can connect that to Jesus, the good shepherd. It's nothing too, too deep. I wouldn't say this is a Bible for a great theologian, although great theologians also need to hear about the love of Jesus in a simple way. But anyways, um, it is a Bible that I re would recommend probably for um, a new believer or for a young man or young woman who are starting to come to Jesus. So then you have the Jesus questions, and these are in the New Testament and they have more than a hundred uh, questions in the New Testament and you can see them throughout all the New Testament. Questions that make you think about your faith and about Jesus and like for instance here in Acts 27 actually relates to Acts 26. Do you prefer being called a Christian or a Christ follower? why and what's the difference so nothing very like out of this world but more practical stuff and simple stuff uh, acts 28 23 if you had a friend who'd never heard of jesus how would you describe him in 30 seconds so you know Questions that make you think, Acts chapter 14, how does Jesus definition, Jesus's definition of peace differ from our culture's understanding of it? Very cool, you know, and I like the look of the little questions, like with a circle in the middle of the text. Um, and this is what I really like about this Bible and about Bibles that bring out Jesus in the Bible. It's because, you know, today in, in Christianity, there's this culture and people talk about Jesus all the time and they praise Jesus and they preach about Jesus but it can become a little bit superficial if it is a Jesus divested from Scripture actually it can become a false Jesus if you preach a Jesus that has nothing to do with the biblical Jesus then you are preaching a false Jesus that cannot save you but if you truly want to know Jesus well the scriptures testify about him it's through the scripture that you can know Jesus so um, a, a Bible that actually highlights Jesus and lets you see who Jesus truly is and draws you to the written word so you can know the incarnate word of God better um, it's actually a, a great concept so then you have the red letter names of Jesus now this is a red letter Bible and you see the words of Jesus in red in the Gospels and in Acts, in Revelation 2, you have the words of Jesus in red. This is one of the things I actually don't like about this Bible very much. There's a few things that I that I don't like about this Bible. And this red, to me, it's too bright and it's almost like an orange. 
Um, I don't know if my camera is rendering it very well, but believe me, this is not your typical dark red for biblical fonts. It's very, very clear, very bright actually, and uh, it's kind of orange here in this, uh, the introduction to the New Testament, yeah. Another thing that I don't like about this Bible is the quality of the paper. There's a lot of show through. You really see the text on the other side of the page. It's not line match. The font is a little bit small too. I, I prefer larger fonts, but there's a lot of space between the lines. So there's not a lot of space in the margins, uh, in the gutter. There's not like tons of space, but there's a good space. You won't, it won't prevent your reading. Let's see here. Let's continue our features here in the beginning. So again, you have the red letter for the words of Jesus in this Bible, but you also have red letter names of Jesus in the New Testament, meaning when in the New Testament, not outside the Gospels, you have the name of Jesus or expressions that are actually used as titles for Jesus, they are in red as well. You see here in Romans, every time you have the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ or Lord, um, sometimes when and the name Lord is clearly a reference to Christ, they will put it in red. Sometimes when it's not very clear, it can mean Jesus or God the Father. They have opted for not putting it in red, but um, yeah, you do have sometimes that they have Lord in red. Another feature of this Bible that is also really cool is the um, Jesus Answers Life's Essential Questions. Actually, you have a guide to those little um, those little boxes or rectangles in the text. You have a guide here um, that goes through all the passages and that tells you where you have those reflections about Jesus answering life's essential questions. And the questions are, what's my purpose in life? Is God real? Why do bad things happen? What is the meaning of life? Is this all there is? Will everything be okay? What is truth? What is love? What is right and wrong? And let's just choose one randomly here, Matthew 10, 25 through 28. If you go to Matthew to okay. Matthew 10, essential question, will everything be okay? And uh, then you can start reading, Jesus is no mere optimist, he doesn't try to pump us up with empty promises. Blah, blah, blah. And uh, you have these uh, throughout the Gospels. And these are the features that are special about this Bible. Then you have the editorial team, you have these three names here of editors and their short bios here. Also the publishing team, content and graphic production team. And then you have Bible book introduction authors, so those introductions that highlight Jesus in every book. Um, you have the authors here, and you can read about them. Also, reframing Jesus contributors, so those who write the texts for those little boxes that provide context and theological insights about Jesus. Then you have an introduction to the New Living Translation, so the, the larger introduction here, um, so you can know a little bit more about this Bible translation. Now you have the Bible translation team and you have the Old Testament. I really, really love the design of this Bible. Really cool. This gray here, awesome. Then you have Jesus in the Old Testament, so an introduction to the Old Testament highlighting Jesus, of course. And then you know how this Bible is. On the inside, I've, I've shown you, sometimes you have the logo um, spread out throughout the Bible in the Old Testament in blue and in the New Testament in orange. It's not red, it's orange, okay. You come to the end of the Old Testament. Now here you have a big, big uh, logo and Malachi, and then you have the New Testament, really cool title page for the New Testament. Again, I just wish this paper was a little bit more thick because you can see through Jesus in the New Testament, and um, that's an introduction there, and then you know how it looks. And um, uh, 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 uh. come to the end, Revelation 22, and you have, again, the cool logo, and you have a Jesus-centered Bible reading plan. And this reading plan will not take you through all the Bible, but it will take you through many 
passages in the Bible, so it's one chapter a day, many passages in the Bible that highlight Jesus. So really cool, cool idea. Okay, so again, for a, a person who's just starting to read the Bible and it's kind of hard to read three or four chapters a day, why not read one chapter that actually draws you closer to Jesus? So great, great concept. There's a New Living Translation Dictionary and Concordance. Ta-da! This is actually a pretty cool dictionary and concordance. Has a lot of pages here, a lot of information. Okay, wow, a lot. And you get to the end of it and that's it, okay? There's no more, this thick paper and that's it. And in the back you also have the Jesus logo. It has one ribbon, matches the color of the cover here, the saddle imitation leather. So again, I love this Bible. I love the concept. I really recommend this Bible for anybody who wants to read and learn about Jesus and have a deeper relationship with Jesus. Uh, I recommend this Bible for young people, for young Christians. Yeah, I just wish the paper was a little bit thicker, better quality paper, and that the red would be uh, red and dark red and not this bright red that looks like orange. Other than that, I really love this Bible. Um, uh, yeah, it's a paste down liner and it curls up a little bit, the cover when you use it, but still, I think for 20 bucks, uh, let me tell you, this is pretty awesome. So you can see a link down in the description below if you're interested in buying this Bible. Um, I hope you subscribe to my channel. I love you and Jesus loves you much, much more. All right, my friend, goodbye.